Hello everybody, John Brewer here. Today I want to talk a bit about the networking engine in Space Engineers. About a month ago, a post on Merrick Rose's blog by the lead developer at Keen said a new networking engine was in the works. I think it's worthwhile to go over how networking works in Space Engineers now, what effects it has on multiplayer gameplay, and what the proposed changes might do. Every few cycles, the client creates a set of update packets with the position, orientation, and velocity of everything in the world and sends them to the server. The server takes those packets and sends them on to each of the clients. Each client trusts the packets it gets, and will update the objects in its world according to the packets it receives, with one exception. If a player is directly controlling an object, like their engineer or the ship they're flying, their client ignores any packets it receives about what other clients think that object is doing. Because different clients run at different simulation speeds, sometimes refresh packets coming from different clients can be considerably different. These problems are most obvious in unmanned ships traveling at high speed. For instance, suppose we have two clients, one running at a simulation speed of 1.0 and one running at a simulation speed of 0.75. There's an unmanned mining carriage underway that they're running down. The mining carriage moves at 25 meters per second. If both clients send out their update packets for the mining carriage after 0.2 seconds, the first client believes the mining carriage has moved 5 meters, but the second only believes it has moved 3.75 meters. If the packets each take 20 milliseconds to make it to the other player, the mining carriage on client 1 will jerk backward over a meter, and the mining carriage on client 2 will jerk forward about a meter. 180 milliseconds later, Another update packet goes out, and this time client 1 believes the mining carriage has moved forward another 4.5 meters to a total movement of 8.25 meters. Client 2 believes the mining carriage has moved forward another 3.375 meters, placing it at 8.375 meters. 20 milliseconds later, the packets arrive, and both clients again have their mining carriages jerk a bit. Because simulation speed and packet travel time is varying all the time, these update exchanges often result in the very large jumps that we sometimes see in unmanned craft traveling at high speed in Space Engineers. There are a few complications here, though. Space Engineers, like most real-time games, uses a protocol called UDP to send these packets. UDP packets are efficient, but they're not guaranteed to get through. Often, this interruption is bidirectional. You lose your connection to the server, and the server loses its connection to you. Sometimes, though, packets are only interrupted or delayed in one direction or a particularly important packet about the control of a ship is lost, and the result tends to be some of the more remarkable desync errors that we see in Space Engineers. A great example of this is the desync error I posted here a few months ago. When I'm driving with the ship, my client ignores packets for the Mega Miner, so my display shows nothing is wrong. Craig, however, is seeing both packets from my client, saying the ship has moved to the far end of the dock, and packets from Marcus's client, indicating the ship is still parked. The client keeps trying to reconcile the problem until I get out of the Mega Miner, and my client begins accepting other updates on the location of the Mega Miner. Thus is some consensus achieved between the clients, although in this case it destroys Marcus's ship. Now I want to talk a little bit about the blog post King put up last month. In it, the netcode is described as having every client transmitting directly to every other client, but having taken a packet analyzer to Space Engineers to make this video, I can say that's pretty definitely not the case. The new RackNet networking engine they're implementing provides a reliability system for UDP, so hopefully the more severe desync errors will become rare, or even a thing of the past entirely. The fact that the focus of the post seems to be on reducing bandwidth rather than resolving the synchronization issues we experience in game is a bit concerning, but I'm genuinely curious to see how the next version of Space Engineer Multiplayer works. I expect that when it comes out, we'll do another video on it. Until next time, I'm John Brewer, bringing you better gaming through applied mathematics.